Can I say it's a particular privilege to be on a platform with my dear friend Michael Kirby. Michael and I have known one another for 40 years or more and he went out of his way to help me as a young labour relations academic. And indeed, when we came to Sydney, Michael introduced Mary and I to St James King Street mm -hmm. as a church to explore and we had a great time there. When I wake up of a morning these days, I actually think the world has gone mad. I, I, that there's demagogic leaders everywhere making statements on Twitter and in voice. We had that dreadful speech the other day in our parliament. People are getting off on saying things that many other people think and don't want to say. I'm a believer in the enlightenment of the 18th century, of truth, of reason. I have a great respect for John Stuart Mill and his liberty and for human rights. <laughs> They're very simple ideas that we treat everybody equally. Uh, persons who are gay, persons who are disabled, persons who are of a different religion, different race. That we have a proper multicultural society but what the last three years has taught me is that if we stand still, we will lose them. That we even cannot take these simple precepts as, as, as given. That we must be vigilant all the time to protect our human rights and of all our sisters and brothers in this community and around the world. The religious book with which I'm most familiar is the Bible. I'm not familiar enough with the Quran. I'd like to go to the New Testament and to St John chapter 9, verse 1. Jesus and his disciples were walking along a road and they came across a blind man. And the disciples said to Jesus, Is he blind because of the sins of his parents? And Jesus said, No. He's blind so that the works of God will shine in him. Now, up until relatively recently, and I mean the last couple of hundred years, and in many developing countries up until now, disability of those of us who were born disabled was seen a result of some wrong by our parents or grandparents, a type of karma. And we were not full citizens of most nations. Uh, we disabled people didn't get the right to vote until this century. And for my sisters and brothers with cognitive disabilities, many don't have the right to vote now. Mm. We were seen in the past and indeed in some countries still around the world as persons who were sexless. Obviously, they don't have sexual feelings. They're, they're disabled. <laughs> um, and that belief still hangs on. In a number of countries that I dealt with when sitting as chair and as a member of the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, uh, there were special laws that persons with disabilities had to go through and special examinations, medical examinations, before they could marry. And even then it wasn't certain they would be allowed to keep any children that were produced. Uh, in Australia, we still have the practice, sanctioned by law, of carrying out non-therapeutic sterilisations on children and adults, usually women, but some men, with cognitive disabilities. I have no difficulty where a sterilisation operation is necessary to save life. One might say forms of hysterectomies. Obviously, they're appropriate medical procedures. But I have, I'm outraged that um, non-therapeutic sterilisations are carried out. And in some Australian, in, in Australian states, if the child is under, 20, under 18, it goes to a tribunal and the tribunal decides. Unlike Canada, where no one can get non-therapeutically sterilised without their consent. 
And, and no guardian can give consent for a person to get non-therapeutic sterilisation. I, I know we have the, the consul from Austria, and I had the job on the committee of being the country rapporteur for Austria. So I was in Salzburg meeting Austrians with disabilities. And we were using pictures so that persons with cognitive disabilities, my sisters and brothers, would understand what we were talking about. One young woman got up and she started crying. And her words were translated to me. She was told she was going in for an operation. She went in for an operation and she came out and she wasn't told until afterwards that she'd been sterilised. She wasn't asked. Now, I think it's important with all groups, LGBTIQ, straight people, persons with disabilities, that we teach people about relationships and sexuality. I mean, uh, without being improper, some people say to me that, that they, it, it's easier to sterilise the, their child with cognitive disabilities, female child, because it, it solves menstruation problems. <coughs> I mean, we need to teach persons, particularly with cognitive disabilities, and all of us, about relationships, the beauty of relationships, the nature of equality. Um, I think one of the best policies for disabled people particularly with cognitive disabilities, is run by the New South Wales um, body, Northcote. I've read um, their sexual policy, which says that everyone has a right to sexual expression, etc. I'm very lucky that I was able to marry and have children and have relationships. It's not the lot of very many people with disabilities. We need to respect everyone's sexuality. My sexuality, my sisters and brothers with cognitive disabilities, those with ambulatory disabilities, every race, LGBTQI, we should all be seen for the fullness and richness of our humanness. And part of the rich fabric is our sexuality, which expresses our, itself in love and in empathy and makes us truly human. Thank you. Mm -hmm.